Can you all close your eyes for a few seconds and imagine somebody who is extremely inspiration to you. Please open your eyes and any names that you can share. My mother. mother. My grandmother. Mother. Mother and my Chandra Prabhu. Super. It was in April 2011, a young lady, 23 years of age, she boarded Padmavati Express from Lucknow to Delhi. She was en route to participate in the national selection for Indian volleyball team. She was a great athlete with a lot of aspirations of making it big in her life in the sport that she loved the most. Standing by the door, she was alluring her future and thinking about her success story going to come in the national team, just when she was lost in the thoughts, a few thieves tried to snatch her bag away. And being an athlete, she had the courage to fight the thieves back. But in the process, the thieves pushed her out of the moving train, and she fell on the parallel track. Even before she could blink, a parallel train driving in the opposite direction ran over her, and her entire leg was crushed. Along with that, her dreams also got crushed. She cried in pain. She was hospitalized. Her leg had to be amputated to save her life. She was looking at this hospital wall, an empty wall, where her life was reflecting as a very unfortunate girl who had lost her leg, who had lost her dreams, who had lost everything. She was staring at her own life where she had to live her rest of the life in others' shape, with others' help. November 1990. A telephone rang at the home of a young man, 20 years old. The caller said, Boy, you are married to the national cricket team. You are going to play for the national team. Test cricket. His family was erupted in joy. Everybody was very happy. The time came. He went on to the play. The first innings, he scored a duck. He went back to the dressing room. Came back in the second innings. He again scored a duck. Captain was upset. He was dropped. Selectors were angry. And then he was never selected again. He went back to his training place. He worked very, very hard. It took 21 months, almost two years, for him to get that telephone ringing again. The telephone rang. He was picked up for the team again. He was so happy. Determined, he came back to the ground, played again. The first innings, he scored a duck. And in the second innings, he got a chance. He scored only one run and got out. He was burning. He was furious. He was crying literally. He was dropped. He went back to his training place again. All the more determination, all the more dedication he showed. A lot of hard work he did. 17 months later, the telephone rang again. He was offered the last chance, the third chance for him to play for his country. He came back to the ground. He played the first innings. He scored a duck again. He got the last chance in his second innings. He again scored a duck in that. He went back to the dressing room, locked up the door and cried like a baby. Four years, three matches, five dots and one run. He was very, very sure his career was over. He was not going to get another chance. He was looking at a life where he has lost all his dream. He was a complete failure. His coach, his teammates, media, colleagues, everybody was stamping him as a choker. He can never handle the pressure. He can never perform in a big situation. He was staring an empty lap. 1938, a Hungarian army soldier was having impeccable skills on pistol shooting. With that skills, he used to participate in a lot of local competitions and used to win a lot of medals. Duly, he won a place in his uh, country's representation for Olympic and he was due to participate in 1940 Tokyo Olympics in the shooting competition. He was expected to win a gold also. But just when he was about to participate, a few months before, during his army training, 
a hand grenade blew up on his hand accidentally. It took away his right hand, the hand that he used to hold the pistol and compete in the competitions. One month in the hospital bed, his arm was lost, his dream was lost. He was slipping into depression. He was forced to retire from the army. He was completely lost everywhere. He was staring at him completely empty life. Well, friends, I carefully chose these three characters across the world and across the timelines because these are very, very ordinary people coming from a very humble background, just like you and me. They don't have a very big name, very big background, very big family, but they had the passion, they had the determination, they had all the aspirations of making it very big in their life, just like you and me. But when the life knocked them down, so hard like this, it is nearly, nearly impossible for them to get up and bounce back on life. But they are the ones who chose to fight back, get up on the floor from the floor, fight back the, the fate and show the willpower and the courage to stand up and go for their dreams. These are the same men who showed that they had the dream, they had the discipline, they had the determination and they had the dedication towards their goals. They never want to give up. They wanted to show that courage. They want to play the game until the end, until the whistle was blown. The lady amputee was Arunima Sinha. She chose to wear a prosthetic leg. From the hospital, she realized to do something very big in her life. Again, she went on training for mountain trekking from the Institute of Mountaineering. For the next two years, she learned how to trek in a mountain. With a prosthetic leg, she truck about six kilometers of vertical distance in the Mount Everest peak. It is not a joke to walk in a sub-zero temperature with a prosthetic leg up that mountain. She became the first Indian female amputee to do that achievement. She had a choice to remain lying in the bed, to look at others for help and live in other shape, or to get up and fight back the fate and achieve her dreams. The young man, the young cricketer was Marwan Atapattu. Seven years of waiting, he went back to the training again, all the more determined, three more years he worked hard. Fourth time he got an opportunity from the selectors and it took seven years for him to score that elusive second run of his career. And from there on, he became a very, very big legendary cricketer. He scored tons and tons of centuries. He became the captain of the national team. He became a coach of that team. He had a choice to give up cricket, give up his dream, give up his future, go back and pursue another profession. But then he chose to stand up and fight back the fate, show the willpower, and he wanted to play the game until the end, until the final whistle was blown. And this army man was Karoli Takax. He didn't want to see what was left. He didn't want to see what was lost. He wanted to see what is left him. He lost the right, but he still had the left hand. He picked up a pistol and for the next two years, he started training with his left hand for the same shooting competition. And by two to three years of time, he became a big professional shooter with his left hand. Eight years later, he went on to get selected and compete in 1948 London Olympics and 1952 Helsinki Olympics. In both the competitions, he won the gold medal. He had a choice to remain in the bed, to take up drinking, to give up in life and get the pension and remain, you know, live the rest of his life. But he chose to get up, fight against the fate, show the courage and want to play the game until the rest of his life, until the final whistle was blown. Well, friends, from all these stories, one thing is very clear. You, I mean, you need, you should not be giving up. But then it's very, very easier said than done. Now look at the period of time that each of them has gone through the struggle. It is not a one day event. It's not a two day event. They have consistently shown the kind of a discipline, dedication, determination and their dream for over three to eight years of period, 
to wake up every day morning to feel that yes they have to chase their dream show the courage fight against their fate to take up the prosthetic leg to take up their left hand and go back and do the training and work hard it's a phenomenal feat life can knock you down at any time you are also ordinary people but whether you want to remain as an ordinary person or you want to convert yourself as an extraordinary person lies with you life knocked me down also even today as i'm going through a tough phase i choose to get up i'm preparing to fight back but whether my efforts will pay results or not i do not know but i'm willing to fight will you fight yes. about the toastmaster